is the most high. You know what I mean? His technology don't mess up like that. Anyway, we don't want to stay too long because we have the Wi-Fi. I don't know if it's giving trouble. It's dropping all the time, so we can try to go even fast. Okay? We are talking about a respiratory system and respiratory illnesses. And we blew a balloon to show you that when you have trouble in the lungs, you can test your lungs to see how strong your lungs is by blowing a balloon. Like a blow balloon or a blow inside. And I can blow it for about two minutes without even um, stopping. And that tells me that I have to because I extend my lungs on a regular basis. All right? That is um, one way of, of, of um, keeping the lungs healthy. If you have asthma and you uh, get an, you feel you are getting an asthma attack, you can put a hole right here, make a small hole, and you can blow like you're blowing a balloon, but you're blowing out, don't blow in, don't pull in, just blow out. When you blow out, you expand the air passage, you expand the, the bronchies, and then the air comes out, you could breathe a little better, while someone is, is tapping your okay? That's a way of stopping an asthma attack. Because the asthma attack can affect your lungs, um, affect your, your heart, all right? Now, we're talking about different things in the lungs. And we were talking about different lung ailments. And the respiratory system is important because the respiratory system works with the circuitry system. Very significant. Because with all good resp respiration, you're gonna have, you won't have good circulation. Bottom line, common sense, right? Because, the, because your lungs pick up oxygen and throw out carbon dioxide. And that happens 24 hours per day. So your lungs work very hard. And again, the lungs over here, your lung is what we call in, in our medicine the tender organ because of where the lung is located in your chest cavity. So anything coming in from the atmosphere, the lungs pick it up. See? And that's the reason why we have to take care of the lungs by not putting things in there that's going to affect our lungs in a negative way. Bottom line. All right? Deep breathing is significant. Skin brushing is also significant because it wakes up the lymphatic system and also helps the lung. So skin brushing is also significant, right? Let's go to the illness of the lungs. Respiratory illnesses, one is asthma, second one is bronchitis, one is COPD, chronic obstruction, preliminary disorder, lung cancer, shortness of breath, lung infections, carrying of the lungs because of people who have saccharidosis or when the lung become damaged is because people have autoimmune diseases like lupus, cerebrodoma, rheumatoid arthritis and all these other autoimmune diseases that uh, whereby the immune system attack the lungs and damage the lungs. So you have to try to prevent these diseases by keeping the immune system healthy and keeping the digestive system well. That is very significant because in order for you to have good digestive health, you have to have good, uh, good in order for you to have good lung health, you have to have good digestive health. Because everything starts in the earth. All right, don't forget that now. Then you have spasmodic coughing. Lots of people have a cough that's very spasmodic. They keep on coughing all day, all night, especially at night. And we're going to teach you how to get rid of, of your spasmodic coughing also. Yeah? Let's look at some lung conditions now. Now, in, in our medicine, you have to know what is going on in the, with the lungs in order for you to fix the lungs. Because you go to all these health food stores, all right? Check the major. You go to all these health food stores, and lots of the people working in these health food stores know nothing about plants. So you go with a cough, and they give you go home. They give you molly leaf. They give you long words. They give you uh, um, um, another herb like maybe white sage. But they do not know that if you have a condition, that this herb will contraindicate your lung condition will get worse. So you have to know what is the condition of the lung in order for you to use the right herbs that will fix your condition of your lungs. That is significant. Now, in all the herbs you will mention, you can go to Ambrosia in Brooklyn, New York. The number is 718-469-0985. And if you have any kind of lung condition, you have to know what the, what, the, what the herbs are. So we will teach you today what the herbs are for different lung conditions. Let's go to the first one. The first one is called a cold and damp condition of the lungs. A cold, come over here, a cold, damp condition of the lungs. 
When you have a cold, damp condition of your lungs, you have what? Excessive amount of mucus. You have chronic bronchitis. You have walking pneumonia. You have a head cold. And you have wheezing. That is what we call a cold, damp condition, meaning that the person is cold, they're feeling very chilly, and they have a cough, and the cough is bringing up lots of mucus. That is what we call a cold, damp condition of the lungs. You have to use different herbs for different conditions of the lungs, otherwise you will never ever fix your lung problem. So the first herb we're going to use here is called thyme. Small thyme. It's a, it is an herb that has antibacterial and antiviral activity. We call it a pectoral plant. Yerba Santa is another herb we use for a cold, damp condition of the lung. I hope you all are listening so you all can learn about plants and how they work in terms of fixing your lung condition. All right? Each one, teach one. Teach someone else. Osha root and ginger and orange peel mixed together. Don't forget, it, this is the formula. They can be mixed together as a tea and use one teaspoon to a cup of hot water. You're going to cover it for five minutes, strain and drink three cups per day. And that, this, 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 this formula here is for when you have a cold and a damp condition of your lungs. Means you have excessive amount of mucus, that's a damp condition. You have chronic bronchitis, you have walking pneumonia, you have a head cold, wheezing, or sinusitis, and you have chills, and you're feeling cold. That's a cold, damp condition of the lungs. Yeah? And these are the herbs you're going to use for that. Yerba Santa, thyme, orange peel, ginger, and osha root. That's for a cold, damp condition. These herbs are contraindicated for a hot, dry condition of the lungs. Don't forget, these herbs should not be used if you have a hot, dry condition of your lungs. They're going to make you worse. And that's the reason why you have to know how to use the plants. That's very significant. Now, this is called a cold, dry condition of the lungs. A cold, dry condition of the lung means you have a dry cough, and if you have sputum, the sputum is very little, and it's very hard to expire it. You can't bring it up. It's called a dry cough, a dry condition. You have a dry cough, your chills, you have, you feel cold, you have a dry mouth, and you're wheezing. You're wheezing in the chest. That's telling me that you have a cold, dry condition of your lungs. Right? So, the, so don't know the symptoms now. The symptoms of a cold, dry condition of your lung is a dry cough, chills, dry mouth, wheezing. The herb should be used there is a herb called spikenard. S-P-I-K-E-N-A-R-D. Spikenard. Another herb is called licorice. Another herb is called sea moss. That's where you use sea moss. You don't use sea moss up here. See? When you have a cold, damp condition of the lungs, you don't use sea moss here because... The mucus, your, 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 the, the, the condition is, is, is already damp. And sea moss is a damp herb. So you can never use sea moss if you have a damp condition of your lungs because it won't fix it. But if you have a cold, dry condition of the lungs, you have to moisten your lung tissue. And that's where, that's where you can use spikenard, licorice, sea moss, astragalus, asparagus, and a herb called princing. It is what we call a, 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 a tonic to the lungs. It's like a ginseng. But it is especially for your lungs if you have a cold and a dry condition of the lungs. Don't forget the conditions now. Play back the tape so you can learn the conditions of your lungs and get the herbs that you're supposed to use for these conditions. Because if you have a dry cough and you go using these herbs up here that is dry, you're going to have more troubles in the lungs. So you have to know what herbs to use for what condition of your lungs. Very significant. Let's go to them over here. This is called a hot, damp condition. A hot, damp condition of the lungs. When you have a hot, damp 
condition of the lungs because you have inflammatory pneumonia. You know what pneumonia is? So anything that is hot is either inflammation. Anything that is hot is bloody. So once you have a hot, damp condition, these are the symptoms you get. Inflammatory pneumonia. You get also sinusitis. You get a sore throat. A sore throat is telling you that you have a hot, damp condition of the lungs. You have excessive amount of mucus. You have tonsillitis. You have bronchitis. You have laryngitis. You have a lung abscesses. And you have blood when you cough it up mucus. That is a hot, damp condition of your lungs. Hot means you have a fever. And when you have the fever, you are bringing up mucus. So a hot, damp condition of your lungs means that you have a fever and you have a cough and the cough is bringing up mucus. The mucus could be yellow, white, or, or bloody. And that is telling you that you have a hot, damp condition of the lungs. Anything with inflammation is a hot condition. Any sore throat is a hot condition. Bronchitis is a hot condition. Lung abscesses is a hot condition. Blood in the mucus or the sputum is a hot condition of the lungs. Excessive mucus is a damp condition of the lungs. Don't forget that now. So when you have a hot, damp condition of your lungs, we go to what? Honeysuckle. Number one. We go to another herb called ho-hum. Number two. H-O-R-E-H-O-U-N-D. We go to another herb called ground ivy. G-R-O-U-N-D-I-V-Y. Ground ivy. Please root. Hong Quinn. It's a Chinese plant. For is very important when you have a hot condition of the lungs and you have that cough is, is, is asthmatic. And another herb called white sage. And white sage soothe the lungs and soothe the mucous membranes of the lungs. Because remember, when you have any kind of condition of the lungs, is because your mucous membranes is being affected, especially if the mucus is damp. Don't forget that now. And then if the lung condition is causing you to get troubles in your heart because you can have troubles in your lungs a heart and damp condition of the lungs and the condition could be so chronic that it can make you or get give you troubles in your heart so once the condition causes you to have troubles in your heart because of the condition of your lungs we go to a herb called what look at over here mother's words and mother's what calms the heart don't forget that now you, in you, you are in herbal medicine school today. So if you have any kind of troubles in the lungs and it is affecting the heart, you throw in mother's word in the mix because mother's word calms the heart muscle and makes the heart become beat very normal instead of beating fast. Because once you have a hot, damp condition of the lungs, you're going to raise your heartbeat. And once the heartbeat is raised because the lungs affect the heart, and the heart affects the lungs. So once the, the lungs affect the heart, and the heart is beating too fast, you put in mother's wort in the mixture. You mix all these herbs together. All of them in a bag. All of them in a bag now. You can mix them all of them. One ounce of each of them. One ounce of each of them. And you're going to shake them up. And you're going to take one teaspoon to one cup of hot water. And you're going to cover it for five minutes. And you're going to drink three to four cups per day with no sugar. And you will see a long, hot condition of your lungs fixed. And you stay from milk and cheese and all the mucus forming foods where you clean up the mucus membranes. And your lungs will be paired if you have a hot, damp condition of your lungs. Look we'll at the next one. A hot, dry condition of the lungs. Remember there is a, is a cold, damp condition. There is a cold, dry condition of the lungs. There is a hot, damp condition of the lungs. And there is a hot, dry condition of the lungs. The symptoms of a hot, dry condition is inflammation, fever, pertussis, blood in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cough when you're coughing. You're not bringing up any mucus. If you're going to bring up mucus, the mucus is, is very small amount of it and full of blood. Or it's very hard to bring up from the lungs. So we have to use expectorant plants there. So you have a fever, you have a dry cough. That's a cold, damp 
cold, bad condition of your lungs. You can never ever use the same herbs you use for a hot, damp condition of your lungs for a hot, dry condition of your lungs. And that's the reason why you don't fix your coughs. That's the reason why you don't fix asthma. That's the reason why you're not preparing lung cancer. That's the reason why you're not preparing infection in the lungs because you've been taught by so-called herbalists to use the wrong herbs. You have to know what the condition is of your lungs in order for you to use the right herbs to repair your lungs. So when you have a hot, dry condition of your lungs, inflammation, pertussis, blood, when you cough, you bring up blood. If there's no, if there's no sputum, you're going to see blood. Fever, dry cough, that's a dry condition. Red tongue. When you look at your tongue in the mirror, your tongue is red. That's a hot condition. Hmm? That's hot. Swollen tonsils, that's a hot condition of the lungs. You have to know what herbs to use. So here are the herbs you use for a hot, dry condition of your lungs. Elecampane. ho hum Red clover. Lots of people feel this herb is only for, for tumors. This herb is good for your lungs. It's also good for, the, for your lymphatic system. Red clover. Lots of herbalists do not even know that red clover is good for your lungs. So they put long words, all, all these other herbs in there for your lungs, but they don't use the herbs for the right condition of your lungs, and then your lung condition becomes worse, and you say, you know what? This herbalist is a joke because I've been using the herbs, and I get no result because you've been using the wrong herbs. You have to know what herbs to use. All right? There's another herb called opiopogon. O-P-H-I-O-P-O-G-O-N. Opiopogon. Wonderful herb for when you have a hot, dry condition of the lungs. Garlic. If there's an infection, bacterial or infection, garlic must be used. While cherry bark, because once you have whooping cough because of pertussis, hmm, and you have a hot, dry condition, the cough is dry, coughing all day, all night, you must use white cherry bark. Must. Because white cherry bark is good for what? Your ammonia and pertussis and whooping cough. And you must use elderberry and you must use sea moss to moisten the lungs because the lung is dry. These are the herbs you have to use for the different condition of the lungs. And that's the reason why you can't fix asthma. That's the reason why you're not fixing lung problems because you're using the wrong plants. Go back to the same one we have eaten. All right, wonderful. Next one, asthma. Asthma in adults. Asthma is an allergy. Because lots of people are allergic to, 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 to hair dander, mites. They are, they are, they are, they are allergic to, to carpet. They are allergic to people who live in an in a, in a, in a, in a insulated house. Mold also could affect asthmatics. But you are asthmatic because your immune system, your neutrophils, your mast cells, is not regulating the water balance. Let them know that. And that's the reason why you're getting asthma. From a child, and sometimes you have asthma as a child, and you and you outgrow it, but it come back on you again. So you have to learn to fix asthma because asthma can affect your heart and give you a heart attack because the lung control the heart and the heart control the lungs. Don't forget that one is fire, one is metal. What burn fire? Met what burn metal? Fire. So the heart control the lungs, the lung control the heart, and that's the reason why we have trouble in your lungs. It goes, it goes to your heart. You get short breath. So when you have asthma as an adult, we look at the component. So we go to the cells. We go to the, we go to the, we go to the, to the neutrophil, the, the, the cells. And we increase water, W-A-T-E-R, water in your diet. Because once you have asthma, your mucus in your lungs is clogged. Mucus, mucus, mucus. And once the mucus clogs your lungs, your air passage, there is no water to be evaporated from the passage because there is so much mucus and the neutrophils and your mast cells is not regulating that water well. So there is lots of mucus in the passage and all of a sudden you start to have constriction of the what? Of the bronchines and you get asthma. And you're eating cheese. And you're eating, you're eating wheat. Corn. Dairy products, and they don't cause asthma, but they can activate an asthma attack. Don't forget that now. Come over here, Major.
There we go. When you have asthma as an adult, you got to use wild cherry bark. You got to use licorice. You have to use lobelia. Lobelia is a herb that has anti, it, it is what we call an antispasmodic plant. And when you have spasm of the lungs, because when you have an, uh, an asthma attack, you, you start a spasm. This herb will stop it. It will stop it. It will also stop spasmodic coughing. When you cough in all night because of the because there is a what? There is a parasite in your lungs. Because a parasite could lodge in your lung and cause you to have a cough. That be, that can become very irritating. So you can teach you how to get rid of the parasite in your lungs by using plants. Lobelia, mullein leaf, wild lettuce, kella, K E L L E. Keller seed. Rishi mushrooms, because the reason why we put Rishi mushrooms in the asthma formulation is because we know that asthma have a lot to do with an, al an allergies, which also hmm, is coming from the immune system, from the mast cells. So we use the Rishi mushroom as an ampeteric, whereby it balances back the immune system, balances back the mast cells, the neutrophils, and then all of a sudden, you don't get no spasm of the lungs, of the bronchites. God is great, man. He that put them herbs on the earth, not me. Jehovah is great. I don't care what they tell me. He lives forever and ever. Amen. And Ginkgo. If there is problem with circulation hmm, in the lungs, we put Ginkgo there. That's not, that, that, that's not only a herb for your brain now. That's what they teach you all. It's a herb for your heart. It's a hurt for your high eyes. It's a hurt for your lungs. Ginkgo is. Do the research. All right. If you never went to if you never went to herbal medicine school, you think it's only for your for your brain. It's not only a brain herb. It's for a lot of things. Right. So these are the herbs for an adult. If the person is over twenty one, we give them these herbs for asthma, wild cherry bark, licorice. Nobilia, mullein leaf, wild lettuce, keller seed, rishi mushrooms, and ginkgo. And we add 1,500 milligrams of magnesium because once you have asthma, you must take this mineral. Must. M-U-S-T, 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 M-U-S-T. You must take this mineral. Must. To bowel tolerance. Magnesium is an antispasmatic mineral. It's not only good for your heart when your heart is palpitating, but it is also significant for when you have asthma because it is antispasmatic and it works on the nerves and the muscles. You must implement 1,500 milligrams of magnesium per day in the liquid form, but not in tablet because minerals do not work in tablet. Your liver don't break them down. I mean, you have all these people selling. Or oh, you're all minerals and tablets, not even they even know better because they're just, they're just pill sellers. You have to know. Knack. Knack and glutathione. Why? Knack and glutathione, NSC. Knack and glutathione does what? They repair your lungs. Oh my goodness, God is great. Knack and glutathione repair your what? Your lung tissue. Ain't no drug could do that. Ain't no drug. That they, that they manufacture in a, in a lab can repair your lung tissue. But glutathione, which is made by your liver, and which is the most abundant antioxidant in the body, he mixed with NAC can what? Can repair your lung tissue if it's damaged. If you have asthma, be complex. B100 and plant based calcium. You know, I say plant based calcium. I said plant based calcium. I said plant based calcium. See, today? plant based calcium from your foods, not from oyster shells. Not from oyster shells, but from your food. Plant based calcium. That's what you need. Plant based calcium. Calcium with all these products, and you'll fix asthma. And I want to say it repair, cure. Let them jail me. Cure, because there's a cure for everything. There's only incurable people. 
as my children. Bring it over here. As my children. As my children. If your child has asthma, you must remove dairy products from your child's diet. You must remove wheat from your child's diet. If your child has asthma, you must remove curtains from your house. If your child has asthma, you must remove carpet from your house. If your child has asthma, you must wash his or her pillowcases every two days. Because there's mites, M-I-T-E-S, in the pillowcases. You can't see them, but they're there. You must never have a dog or a cat in your house. Unless you can balance back the child's immune system and keep the child's mast cells working well and implement lots of water in the child's diet to, to do what? To move or get rid of the mucus in the child's a passage that cause the child to have constriction of the bronchioles and cause the asthma. Otherwise, you'll never fix asthma in your children. I'm telling you that today. Asthma in children. Echinacea, elderberry, lemon balm, wild cherry bark, orange peel, flavored, astragalus. Don't forget the herbs for your child. Echinacea, elderberry, lemon balm, wild cherry bark, orange peel, astragalus. And what these, some of them do? They build up your child's immune system. Look at them. Go find them. See them? Put it on. Over here. Put it on. Here. See? Look at them here. For kids. They are help for kids too. See them? Deep immune immunity. It, 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 it's, it's threatening your child's immune system. That's what you have to get. All these herbs. Get them. And if the child is under 40 pounds, it should be a half a teaspoon. If the child is over 40 pounds, it's one teaspoon. And remember that if it's an infant, you have to get the one for infant. These herbs in the formula for infant with, with, um, with glycerin. Or a toddler. And the amount of milligrams of magnesium you should ingest, uh, you, you, you should make a child ingest, is only 100 milligrams of liquid magnesium and uh, 25 milligrams of the B-complex liquid in the liquid form for your child. If the child is under 10 years of age, all right? If the child is under 10 years of age, B-complex in the liquid form, 25 milligrams per day, of, or three times per day, 100 milligrams of magnesium three times per day for your child. Your child will never have asthma. Never, ever, never. And lots of water. You must implement these things in your children's diet. Otherwise, you will live in the emergency room. And you will live in them doctor's office. And all I want to give you is the pump. Steroids. That don't fix nothing. Asthma in children, echinacea, elderberry, lemon balm, wild cherry bark, orange pea, astragalus in children. That's what you have to use for your children. All right. Next one. Let's go to lung cancer now. Lung cancer. Now we have a couple of patients who had, I want to use the word had, lung cancer. Um, had uterine cancer too. Cancer went to her liver. Cancer went to her lungs. And now she's cancer free after eight, after eight years. After eight years, she's cancer free. Give God the glory. Give him the glory now. Give God the glory by pushing your love button and giving Jehovah God all the glory. Don't give me nothing. Push your love button and give Jehovah God all the glory. All right? Now, with lung cancer, you have to be careful because you have to know again what is the condition of the lungs. The lungs, again, when you have lung cancer, you can either have dry cough, uh, dampness, or heat in the lungs. So you have to know what help to use. And you have lung cancer. So when you have lung cancer, let me teach you now how you fix your lung cancer. You have to use 100,000 IU of vitamin A per day. 
when you have lung cancer. Must do that. You must. Because number one, vitamin E prevents you from getting lung cancer. That's a fact. Do the research. And although it is stored in the liver, it's a fat soluble vitamin, you must check with your doctor. You must check with your doctor to make sure that you don't have too much of the vitamin A in your body, which could cause a toxic effect. But you need a hundred thousand IU of vitamin A per day, and you will see your lung cancer start to disappear. God is great. He gave me wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He gave me no riches because I didn't want that. He gave me knowledge and wisdom. That's what I ask him for. That's all I want from him. Selenium, 400 micrograms per day. Vitamin C, 15,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day buffered when you have lung cancer. And you must space it out during the day. Two teaspoons of garlic three times per day when you have lung cancer two, two teaspoons I don't care what they tell me with garlic garlic is the king garlic been around long before these people who come who come talking bad about garlic it been around longer than them since in Egypt you understand two teaspoons of garlic three oil or the juice of the garlic mixed with some ginger and some turmeric three times per day one two teaspoon three times per day you will see a tumor is shrinking in your lungs go back and take another ultrasound mri ct scan very important now you must have nap six tap of the nap per day which of glute tyrone which is 500 milligrams per day why because as i said nap and glute tyrone together they onset the negativity of the chemotherapy while helping to enhance your immune system. But they keep the good cells well while the chemo is killing your bad cells, number one. Number two, what they do is also, they remove excessive amount of mucus from your lungs and they also repair your lung tissues when they are used together. Don't forget I told you that. Holy immune. You must use him. Because you need holy immune when you have lung cancer. Why? <clears throat> because Dr. Jeffrey Downs, he's an oncologist, a cancer specialist. No, not me. He made this protocol. He's a, he's a, he's a, he is a doctor. And what he did was he used lots of herbs, lots of minerals. And he deals with what we call liver detoxification. Because once you have cancer in your lungs, you have to protect your liver. And you have, to have, you have to keep your liver strong to remove toxins. Why? Because once the cancer leaves your lungs, the first place it goes straight to your liver. So you have to have your liver detoxifying itself. You have to have your liver keeping the enzymes well. And you have to have your phase 1 and your phase 2 detoxification of your liver at peak with the 453 P5453 pathway working at peak. So that if that cancer moves, your, your lung, your, your liver will lick him out because he's strong. But if you have a weak lung and your cancer moves to your liver and your liver is weak, your cancer will go someplace else. And then that's how your cancer kills you. But you can have cancer in your lung and keep the cancer in your lung until you get rid of that cancer. The cancer will never ever kill you. Take it from me. Beta carotene. 75,000 IU per day and vascular statin. You need him. Angio block, they call it. Angio block. Here, see there? Angio block. You know what they call angio block? Angio block means that he, right here, him, I ain't seen no drug to do that yet. Angio block prevents what? Angiogenesis. So angio block prevents your cancer cells from creating blood vessels. Because once your cancer cells start to create blood vessels, they grow. Because they need nutrients like your natural, like your, like your, like your, like your good cells. So you have to starve them by creating angiogenesis. So once you use angioblock, 
Angio block prevents these cells from creating the blood vessels so they can feed. And then the lung, the lung, the lung tumor starts shrinking with a good diet. We're going to tell you what the diet is like. Foods and herbs for lung cancer. Food and herbs for lung cancer. Red clover, podiaco, white sage, mother's wort if, it, if it's affecting your heart. Dan Shen to move the blood. Prince Sen, tonic for the lungs. Keep the lungs strong. Strengthen your lungs. Woo, Jesus. God is great. Strengthen your lungs so that the cancer can move and you get, we, we kill the cancer cell there. Because once your lung is strong and you're not working your lungs like a work horse and you're doing some good breathing and taking herbs, these herbs work as tonic to the lungs and they strengthen the lungs and you get rid of your lung cancer that way. Mushrooms to strengthen your Immune reservoir. That then I root to keep the liver healthy. Cascara sagrada to keep the bowels moving because if you want to keep the bloodstream clean and you want to keep acid from your blood, you must remove these toxins from the organs. So cascara sagrada will work on your digestive system and your bowels because in order for you to fix lung cancer, you have to have things moving out of the body. You cannot have things being stagnated in the earth, which is your digestive system. Sea moss, ginger, turmeric, peas and beans, peas and beans, because the glycemic index in these foods are small, 28 glycemic index. Green leafy things and all yellow and green foods. Organic, not sprayed. You juice them. You juice them every day. All the yellows. Because all the yellows are good for your lungs. All the greens build the blood. Chlorophyll keep the bloodstream alkaline. And prevent acid from the blood. And once you don't have acid in your blood. And the blood is clean. Because the blood is your life. I don't see how cancer will survive. All them things in. All them things in. See them? Don't throw them away. Do not throw these away. Why? Because they have anti-tumor activity. You know what I mean? You put them in your, in your mortar and pestle. Huh? With your seeds. And you crush them up. And you put them in your foods. You use them. That's what they're for. That's why you got to put them on the earth. Modify citrus pectin. Because they, well, you know what they do? They uncoat your cancer cells so that they are caught by the immune system. So once they cancer cells want to camouflage, these guys here uncoat them, man. They uncoat them so they can't go nowhere. And the immune system, if it's at peak, it gobble them up and kill them off. But you're running to take your chemotherapy, which is not your best choice because chemo don't fix you because you can never fix a toxic disease with a toxic drug. Never. But I'm not. And then, come over here now, Major. For your child, don't forget to get it for your children. For your child, don't forget your child. <clears throat> Have asthma, give them these. Cough and colds. Give them these things here. Look them up. It's on my website. Give them to your children. And once you have cancer, you must use that. PBA, probiotics, 40 billion. Crowd up the guys inside here. Here, Major. You crowd up inside here. You have to have your clean right here. He must be clean. Because he is a sewage system. And if you keep the sewage system dirty, you can never fix cancer easy. Lung formula. In your lungs. Three times per day. Can you do that cleanse? Once you have cancer, you must do a cleansing of yeast. You got to clean up the mucous membranes. You must do that. And once the mucous membranes is clean and the organs are strong, cancer is gone. And you have to boil your sea moss. Sea moss, cinnamon, tamarind, inside it, hmm? boil it. Hmm? Cloves, if there's any parasite in your lungs, cloves.
cloves, don't forget that. Mix them, in the, mix them with the CMOS. Ginger. Bay leaf. Inside there. And you mix them and you boil them together. Eh? And then you take some coconut water. And you put some coconut water inside there. And you drink it. Your lungs must respond to you. Must. And if there is cancer in the lungs, or if there is lung congestion and you have asthma, you can take some flaxseed oil, some flaxseed powder, yeah? You can take the powder, you can boil it in some water, yeah? The flaxseed that is, and let it get very thick to the into paste. And when the flaxseed becomes thick, you take the flaxseed and you spread it on a on a cheesecloth or a linen, like this. After you boil it, it becomes become like a paste, call it a poultice. A poultice. You put it on a linen like that. And take it. And you put it on your lungs. Right here from this. And you cover it with a towel. And when that gets into the body, that cancer tumor, whoo, never survive. Flax oil or flax meat. Boil it and make it into a poultice. And put it on a linen. Don't forget. And then you put it on a linen top on your chest. And you these things here. Keep the earth clean. You must keep them clean. You must keep them clean. And once you keep your digestive system clean, so all the process, carbohydrates, all the refined foods, juice your yellow foods. Huh? Eat the peas and the beans. Huh? Stay from there. Eat all your oranges and all your grapefruits raw. Don't make no juice with them. Just eat them raw. And then your body will respond to you. And you'll have a juicer. And you'll have your blender. And that's all you need in your house to fix your respiratory troubles. Any kind of condition in your lungs. That's all you need. A juicer, a blender. And the thing that is found in nature that Jehovah God put on this earth for us to use, for us to use as medicine because he said, in what? In Revelation 3, the herbs, the leaves of the trees shall be for what? The healing of the nation. That's what I believe. And with all the healing, with all the herbs, we can never heal. And without you, the individual, keeping animosity in your heart, you keeping hate in your heart, you keeping jealousy in your heart, you keep an envy in your heart. You can do all these things. But if you have all these hate and jealousy and build up of animosity, then you will never ever heal. Because forgiveness is everything. But when we go to the most high to forgive, to ask for forgiveness, he accepts us and wipes the slate clean. Because he, Jehovah is love. Now give thanks and praises to the most high. Don't forget. If you want to get your herbs, you call Ambrosia 718-469-0985 and ask for Ashante or Trisha and they will take care of you for me. And don't forget, love your neighbor as yourself. And don't forget to get away, get away from hate and jealousy and envy. If you want to heal, if you want to heal, if you could do all the things in the world dealing with nutrition, but if you don't have forgiveness, and if you have hate and animosity in your heart, you will never heal. So give Jehovah God all the glory because every wisdom, everything, wisdom and knowledge and understanding belongs to Him. Bless and love. Peace.
Isaiah. As if I thank for watching, bless the love, give thanks. Yes, I. Jah is great. Jehovah is the greatest, man. I will come nobody tell me, bro. Jehovah is the greatest of all. He give us love and strength and understanding and wisdom. Give thanks, you know. Yes, I.